What's going on, everybody? This is your boy Chaz C. No Roper, and I'm the director of the Amplifier program and Amplifier Community Connection. Today, we have a special guest all the way from Charleston, South Carolina, Miss Karma Estevez. Karma, how you doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Good, man. Thank you so much for flying in for us because I know the music uh, community of Milwaukee and also um, those who are just business owners, they need this because branding is everything um you are your brand as you used to tell me me and carmen go way back i met carmen through a friend of a sister of mine lachey martin and uh lachey martin tony excuse me and we used the to write infamous, songs together the infamous yes we used to write records together back in the day and all of us have pivoted in our lives from being uh songwriters and who knew the gift i knew the the amazing gifts you had as a writer and a producer and an engineer and and a singer and things of that nature, but I had no idea of the secret gift that you had, was hiding from us at the time. Because if we <laughs> knew you had this gift, we'd have been uh, we'd have been worth a hundred million dollars because we'd have been on YouTube with this gift, <laughs> right. all these other things, and I never knew these things existed. So this is a conversation with right. Carmen Estevez, who is an amazing branding expert. Thank you. And uh, I've yeah, I, I've had the opportunity of using her branding ability when I pivoted from being a producer and a songwriter to uh, opening my artist management company. And the first artist that I signed to my artist management company, Carmen did all the branding and things for um, Lakia for me. Yes. So um, now obviously she did much more uh, greater things than what she did for me. But I just I just know personally how she helped uh, create st the starting process of a a, begin a, a new Breaking artist. An artist, yeah. Right. So and it, and it and it helped tremendously, as you can see where she is nowadays. Um, but let's t let's go into your story. Talk to us about where you know where you came from, how it was coming up. Let's talk to us about that. Let's go into that. Ooh, gotta take you back. Well, like you said, I started in actually I was a ball player. I'm gonna start there. Okay. And I think the pivot or the creative inspiration came from one day, someone wasn't there to sing the national anthem. Mm -hmm. And they're like, uh, who's gonna sing it? And I was like, I want to. Right. And I sang the national anthem. And I think after that day, I was like, you know what? I wanna get into the music field. I wanna sing, I wanna do that. So I, I pursued my creativity in singing in, you know, in music. And I started writing, creating, um, and I think naturally from there, it was like, you know, this isn't enough. It's not enough. Mm -hmm. I ended up breaking down equipment, rewiring studios. I was like, okay, that was, that's good. It's not enough. Mm -hmm. Songwriting. Okay, that's good. It's not enough. Worked with artists. I was able to, you know, get in the studio, mix engineer for a lot of big artists at a young age. But I was like, you know, this is good, but it's, it's something more. So I, then I started to get into um, film. Mm -hmm. directing, producing. Um, that was kind of simultaneously as I was doing music. Mm -hmm. um, I think within the music, within the film, I, I created an avenue where I cultivated relationships. Like I met you, I met the likes of Lachey. I, I met so many great people, but then I started to realize there was a process in growing. Right. In, at first, you know, I was like, no, I'm just gonna stick to music. I'm just gonna stick to that. And then it got to film. I'm just going to stick to film. But then I realized creativity is fluid. Like, mm -hmm. it doesn't stay still. So Absolutely. naturally, I started to say, okay, let me get around artists. Let me see the development stage of that. Let me see what they need. Right. I was already a um, gifted in, you know, creative mm -hmm. drawing, um, creating sculptures and stuff like that. So it was natural that my next progression after film, I became a professor and I started teaching film and audio and an understudy in, you know, broadcast journalism. Right. And from there, I decided, I was like, okay, you know what? Let me just take a break from teaching and getting more to the artistic space. Right. And I think it's when my mom passed away when I started, let me tap into this brand more. Mm -hmm. um, and I started in that in that direction, and I took on big names, a lot of big companies, to produce 
their brand, the creative right. aspect, whether it's the video direction, whether it's the in-house, we are reconstructing, doing your apps, your websites. It became a whole monster mm -hmm. that involved all of the things that I had done prior, mm -hmm. the music, the film. Now it's the creative, like the actual visual mm -hmm. of it. So Absolutely. And I remember when you were a professor, you had me fly. Fly yes, down to speak you to your class. <laughs> right. Celebrity Guest Wednesdays. Celebrity right. Guest Wednesday. I am not a celebrity. That was the funny part of Celebrity Guest, and they had no. me. I walk in, it was like, who the hell is that? Who is that? But you know what was so awesome? When I was teaching, and it's so funny you bring that up, celebrities to me are not the cliche celebrities. They were people you cultivated in the relationship, right. you know, like a relationship with them. You you learned them. You've worked with them. We've worked together. Right. I knew you. I saw you grind. I saw you mix. I saw your hustle. Right. I needed my students to see that. Absolutely. I needed them to see that it wasn't just glitz and glam. It wasn't just, right. oh, dress up, wear the fly watches and stuff and just show up. They needed to see the work. So... That was that was that was huge. Yeah, we had a good time. You was, opened some sessions. You yeah. were able to like a break lot down, of the celebrities. Yeah, I broke down. I think like Brandy. I think right. I broke down Rihanna's session. Who I broke gets, down. Who exactly. gets that opportunity? Absolutely, absolutely. Right. So let's go back to the 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 teenage or preteen Carmen. Ooh, what? Yeah, let's go there. Let's let's because no. because I want people to understand the process. Like right. here, we're big on understanding the steps it took to get to where you are okay. so i don't want to skip let's let's go to you know 10 12 13 15 year old carmen what was that carmen doing good question that carmen was playing ball mm -hmm. but that carmen had a mentor which was my grandfather right um it's funny when i talk about him steve he goes by so many different names but I call him Steve, but he was such the inspiration, but he pushed me. He was the equivalent of what um, Michael Jackson's father, you know. Gotcha. It was like Joe that, Jackson. Gotcha. Yeah, it was that tough love. You want to be somebody, you got to work. So he, after I told him, you know, I want to do this music thing, I think this is, he took me under his wing, uh, wings. I think the first stop we made was to a pawn shop. He purchased me a keyboard, I think a Yamaha. I don't, that thing was old mm -hmm. and speakers mm -hmm. mics and stuff like that um and he set up my studio in his art gallery he was an artist one eye um and he had sculptures he's paintings and that's where it started it started where i told somebody i have a dream like this is who i am mm -hmm. and instead of them like no just stick to basketball just do the right go to school right the next day he was getting me prepared. I was on the mic. I was writing songs. I was watching him in his art gallery creating these sculptures and this G clay, these, you know, um, graphic designs. That was the first time I actually saw it, you know, up front, like mm -hmm. face to face. And I think the start of the creativity came from my grandfather. Absolutely. And, and he nurtured it. Gotcha. He nurtured it. So, I mean, I, I could do a documentary because he even took me on the road. I was young. I was 15, 16. He had me doing one woman acts. I would be on a stage similar to this. And I swear my first performance, it was two people in the audience. And I was like, I can't do this. Nobody showed up. Right. Nobody showed up. I think the music went out. And after that performance, I think I cried. I was like, why? why? Like, this isn't for me. I did this whole set. Nobody showed up. We did the marketing. We did all of this stuff. I rehearsed. I wrote these songs. I produced this stuff. Nobody showed up. And he was like, well, this is a part of being a star. This is a part of the right. process. And I'm like, what, to be embarrassed? Like, what, to feel not like you're not good enough? Absolutely. And he said, yeah, exactly. Because if you can feel it now, then later when it happens or things shift or doesn't work out in your favor... It's nothing. You keep going. The mic needs to go out for you to continue singing. You know, it's all a, a knee-jerk reaction, but how Absolutely. are you going to take it when you get to that level in life? And I was young. I was like, I don't, okay, whatever you say. Right. right. <laughs> okay. I, li I like that, though, because, <laughs> you know, most artists, writer, producer, whatever mm -hmm. it may be, they think it happens overnight. And then uh, I tell you, oh. if, if it happens overnight, night. It's been a long night for me. You hear me? The longest night in history. <laughs> you what? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. man, I had hair when the night started. 
<laughs> you see what I'm saying? You just get that fresh line. The fresh, fresh, the fresh waves. You remember three right. sixes? Over it. Done. Nothing. Wave I'm, cap. I'm, I'm dead. Wave. I, I wear a wave cap for fun now. <laughs> Just to say I can wear one, you know. I know how to tie oh it, you know what I'm saying. Oh so if it was a night, it was a lot. I didn't have gray hair, all these gray hair, you know. <laughs> so it's, if it happens overnight, it's always a long night. I don't care who the artist is. Right. I don't care if they go viral. Right. A lot of times they'll go viral, but they've been doing it for ten years before they went viral. Right. But it right. seems like it happens overnight. It seems like because it. once you get in, it goes fast. That's why you have to be prepared before you get in it. Ooh, so I it doesn't, you. you know, it doesn't take you for. It's not a shocker because what you will do is you will sabotage, self-sabotage yourself. You You'll be right there at the at the, at the brink of yeah. of success or or greatness, or elevation for what you know for yourself. Right. And you'll self-sabotage because right. you weren't prepared. So I like to hear things. I like for those out there watching us to hear things like that because it's been a long night for everybody who's been successful. I don't care who it is. Beyonce. It's been a long night what? for her. Right. Jay Z. Whoever. Right. It's been a long night. So. Now that you, you've done uh, your, your first show and things didn't go well, and you pushed forward and you kept going, mm -hmm. now you're graduating college, Carmen. I mean, graduated high school, Carmen. What do we do next after we graduate high school? Where am I going? Mm -hmm. What am I doing with my life? Right. Um, I'm getting older. My grandfather was really good for saying, you, you, how old are you now? And I'm like, 18? Uh, okay, well, you got probably 10 more years to do something with yourself. Right. I'm like, for real? He's like, yeah. I'm like, but why? He's like, you keep working. What are you going to do? Um, I went to college. I went to Atlanta. Okay. And um, I went to the Art Institute of Atlanta, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to figure out a major. I choose audio. Mm -hmm. Grandfather calls. Yeah. What would you do that for? Um because I, music is my life. I want to be a producer, an engineer. I want to do it for the grace. He was like, but think about it. You're an artist. You create, you know, GK, you, you know how to create art. You, you know how to mix in all of this stuff. Yeah, you can sing, you can write, but if you're on set, you know, you want to direct, you want to produce, but if you're on set, nobody's going to go to an audio engineer and ask them their advice about camera angles or they're not going to come and this is no you know shame no i understand this yeah. specific field but he was trying to prove a point get through to me to not pigeonhole myself right he was like think about it the the career that you choose or the degree that you choose should be a degree that encompasses everything that you want to grow to i'm like i want to do audio and then it dawns on me in film there's audio engineers. They mm. mix Marvel movies. They mix, you know, okay, I could still do that. In film, they're artists. I can create the cover art, the graphics. Oh, duh. In, in film, I can score. I can produce. I can sing. I can write the soundtracks. And I was like, okay, now I see why you're my mentor. Okay, Absolutely. it's kicking in now. I changed my major to digital filmmaking. And that was the best thing that I did because that was another milestone in learning that, you know, if you're going to college, if right. you are choosing, making decisions, they're very hard. You want to make sure that whatever that decision is, you don't pigeonhole yourself into something that does not grow. Right. You know, and so I chose digital filmmaking and that's where the second half of my life kind of came Makes from sense. there getting into film makes sense yeah. so now you get out of college right whether you graduate or not we're gonna leave that to them for them to do their research right. so you get out of college <laughs> <laughs> right. and now you get into the real world of right. the music industry what's the first thing you do oh god the first thing i'm doing is engineering for all of the the artists now, you know, that are out now. I was, I was engineering for them. Um, and I was, I wouldn't say I was trying to find my space because while I was in college, I was doing the work. I was in the studios. Mm -hmm. I was um, mixing, engineering, breaking the stuff down. I was doing live shows, um, 
I was doing a lot of stuff in college and I was using that as almost my, uh, what do they call it? Were you intern internship? That was okay. Our institute, like I was in the industry, but that was my internship. Absolutely. So when I got out, these were already cultivated relationships and, and, and partnerships. I was already working in the industry. So I was already mixing engineering, songwriting, getting placements. I was getting placements um, with television networks. Mm-hmm. Um, and it all started to make sense, that transition from starting in music to getting into film. Well, now I know about placements. I know what they need. So I was able to see, okay, I can write for this artist, but now I know film so well mm-hmm or the television world Mm -hmm. that when I write, I know exactly who to to get my stuff to. Mm -hmm. So it was alignment. It was alignment for me. Absolutely. And that's key. Um, Having good product is good. Think about selling the best chicken in the world. (laughs) And the only people that knows that you have the best chicken in the world are those people at your house who eat it. That's it. Right. But if the world knew how good this chicken was, was, you could have had KFC, Popeyes, or well, whatever chicken place you want to call it, right. Cr- JR Crickets and A, right. whatever. So the key to all of that is being able to market it, your market your product. Right, right. And that's the key. It's nothing like having it's some there are some albums that are killing the the albums that are on top of the charts. Right. The difference is the marketing behind it. I need to get into that because I think people are confused with marketing and branding. Right. People don't know what it is. They say it, but you don't know what it is. Right. Branding. What is branding? Branding Absolutely. is, my my definition, is your unique identity. So think about it as a noun, person, place, thing, product. It's that product's or that person's unique identity. Absolutely. It's, and that unique, unique identity is your story. So when you think of your top artist, you think of your favorite chicken there's a storyline attached. One can't exist without the other. So you can't just say, Poop, I got this thing, buy it from me. Who's going to do that? It has to have a certain level of credibility. Absolutely. So first, before you, you have a brand, you know, you have to have a story. So I'm glad you even asked me because I'm, I'm up here practicing what I'm going to say. And you're, you're asking me these questions about where did it start? Well, who I am now is because of my story. And I think with artists, um, any industry, uh, artists, actors, producers, you have to start with your authentic story. Mm -hmm. Don't change it up. Like, don't try to make it pretty and nice. Like, you know, I want to sell to luxurious. Yeah, we understand your end goal. But if you start with your original story hey i'm I'm from the hood like straight Mm -hmm. from the hood the things i've seen people can relate to that they can relate to that they can i'm I'm sure little girls can relate to probably wanting to sing a little national anthem not knowing where it's going to take you telling their dad or their grandfather this is what i want to do and have someone actually rally behind them absolutely and it's staying in alignment who knows who my story resonates with but I think that's the start of it. To have a great product, a brand, a lifestyle brand, you have to have an amazing story, a unique story. Mm -hmm. So, and you leave it up to people to to decide if that resonates with them. And I agree with that. A lot of times, especially today's society, because of Instagram and all these different social media networks, TikTok, they wanted to see everyone. The goal is to look like you have it before you have it. But the (laughs) artists that do the best. Yes. The artists that are the biggest yes. are the ones you know where they came from. They were on Cardi B is a big star, not because of her music. Her music her. helps. Yes. But I remember watching Cardi B with the the, the messed up teeth right. and just keeping it one hundred from whatever she had going on. Authentic. With, yep. Authentic. Her authenticity. Even when she decided to change, um, or enhance or grow. Mm-hmm. She still remained Cardi B. She was still, and she shared this change, this growth with people. She didn't hide from it. Yep. And I think that's a number one, you know, mistake. A yep. lot of people who build brands, they try to hide the truth. Like, we're going to find out. Do you know there are detectives out here on the Internet? Like, Absolutely. On social media, that's what they do. They have nothing all day nothing but to do Nothing else to do but to find if you're real or not. So it almost makes sense yep. to be successful 
to just be authentic, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. Yeah. I agree 100%. Authenticity. So I hope y'all got that out there. Authenticity is a part of branding. You have, yeah. to be, you have to be authentic when you're trying to brand whatever, you're, especially yourself. Yeah. I'll say it like that, especially who you are. Right. We want to know about the trials and tribulations that you've had right. and that you have overcome to get what you are. That's important. So make sure authenticity is a part of it. Give me something else that's, that's important when it comes to branding that you think. Let's see. Branding. Well, one, authenticity. Mm -hmm. But knowing the difference between branding and marketing. Absolutely. Branding, you need your story. Mm -hmm. Once you have your story, then you make sure it's authentic, it's real. The next step would be your end goal. Mm -hmm. That's another place where people mess up. Because you'll have someone saying, okay, I'm this. It's unique, but they don't have an end goal. So the end goal could be, um, I want sales. So if you have a product, my end goal is sales. Um, someone else as a... An artist, an artist would be sales as well, but more awareness. I want people to see me, Instagram, mm -hmm. social media. And another, another can just be, I love creating art. I just want people to, you know, if they t chime in, that's good. If they don't, that's good too. So you have to make sure you define your story. It's unique, authentic, but you have an end goal. From that end goal, these are that's a part of branding. Then you move to marketing. Because once you have an end goal, you have the plan. Marketing is just the exposure or people being aware of this baby that you created, mm -hmm. of this story. It's for the world to see. Then you have your channels of marketing. Mm -hmm. You market it, social media. You create your digital real estate. Mm -hmm. People are like, what is digital real estate? That's probably just as important as your house you purchase. Absolutely. Digital real estate is your website. Are you creating an app? your intellectual property because if social media goes down guys instagram and you're selling and you got all these followers and they decide to shut down the next thing you know you've lost that day of sales that day of awareness you can't let anybody control your your awareness or your end goal so you want to have digital real estate something you own so stop ownership. right there that's extremely important because there was a there is a, a client of mine that i'm helping that i want to help okay and i said to him you got six hundred thousand followers on instagram mm -hmm. what if instagram go down tomorrow right we you need to figure out a way to make sure that you have contact with these 600,000 people that you have now. Because if, if that go down, you start from square one. Right. Two weeks later. It goes down. <laughs> they cut his page off. Oh, at 200,000 followers. I mean, at 600,000 followers. Cut his page off. He make his money through Instagram. Wow. I call Carmen. Mm. I say, yo. I explain the situation. She was like, well... It, until it goes back up, he has to rebuild. But what he, while he's rebuilding, he needs to have somewhere for them to go so everybody that he's, that he's rebuilding knows to go to his own spot. Right. Now, I'm not going to say who the individual is. I said, well, can you help him do that? She said, absolutely. So we sent him, sent him her work. He was like, man, can we start tonight? <laughs> right. Can we start right now? Okay, okay, okay I'm driving. Wait, oh, oh, right. okay, okay. So long story short, she created an app. A, a website for him, mm -hmm. and I think he's back up to two, three hundred thousand followers now. So everybody goes there. So now he has con he has direct to consumer contact with yes. his audience. Yes. That's key. So it's just because you got a million followers, two million followers on Instagram, if you're not sending them somewhere to find you where you can have direct contact with them, right. you're doing yourself a disservice. Because you can send them to Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, whatever, and if all those go down. You still got to have somewhere that you control. Right. Because right. Facebook or Meta owns something else, Instagram. Instagram. Correct. So if they shut you down on one, they probably going to shut you down on the other. You right. know what I'm saying? So you got to make sure that you have total control of where your audience finds you or can get in contact with you right. or can follow you. It's cool for them to follow you on the social media platforms, right. but you should have your own social media platform or right. uh, digital real estate. Digital your real own estate. home. Yep. You got yeah. You want them to come to your home. Yeah. <laughs> so much. make sure. And then just her saying that jogged my memory about yes. that was about seven eight months ago. Yes. I was like, yo, we need Save you to do him. yeah help like, him out. Whoa. So he's back on his feet now. But it was because of 
she created digital real estate for him. She was the broker for him right. to get his digital real estate. I was so. like the, what is it, Olivia Pope? I had yeah. To Pope that situation. Yeah, absolutely. You know, come on, what so that's happened? key. Right. That's key. Okay, so marketing. We, we in marketing. Right. So now people understand your story. You're, you're getting out there to the masses. You're having your digital real estate. Now that you have your marketing, how do you continue to grow your brand f from there? Well, you continue to grow your brand by we can't forget alignment. Mm. So my story, every I've been aligned with creativity. You've been aligned. You start in music. Your natural progression, you're growing, but you're still in alignment. Absolutely. That's the biggest key, consistency and uh, persistence, but staying in alignment. Mm. The, the, a lot of people mess up when they try to switch up, be like, oh, look at what I'm doing now, and you didn't prepare your audience. So if you want to grow, you want to make sure your brand is consistent. You want to make sure that you make your audience aware of any changes. And we've seen that with, you know, certain big brands. They change, you know, they went from organic to, mm -hmm. to not organic or whatever the case may be. And the backlash that it receives because when you grow, whether you're using social media or not, you have to make sure that you figure it out. It, whether it's a rebrand, whether it's um, just updating people on any changes, whether it's making sure that your story is aligning, communication is important. Mm -hmm. But you also want to make sure that you're tapping into some of the tools. Right. Analytics. This is big. Marketing, awareness, you'll get, this is my story. I, I call it the, 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 good, the good guy story. You get one guy, he'll say, oh, my God, you're so amazing. And they talk about your brand. Mm -hmm. you take your brand to them. Oh, it's so amazing. Man, you're doing great. The other guy says, oh, man, you're doing such a good job. I love, I love your, your brand. I, I love it. The second guy comes to a show. The second guy also buys the product or maybe some merch you sold. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between the two? The difference is they both said, okay, yeah, you're good. They're the good guys, right? But the difference is one said it and one actually showed action. That's how marketing is. You want to be sure that you're not getting so excited about the likes. Right. And you want to get more excited about the engagement. So you want to tap into Instagram, Facebook, and look at the engagement. Some people will get 2,300 likes but get 5.4 million views. Which one is more important? Right. The views because people are are supporting you by watching it. Likes do not get fooled by it. It doesn't matter. Following and engagement are quite important mm. because following says you have a tribe. You have a tribe of people who are committed to watching you. Mm -hmm. um, and then views saying they're gonna continue to watch you. But views, whew, analytics, it gives you data. That's like somebody, I think every parent has said, um, uh, Actions speak louder than words. Absolutely. That's exactly how marketing is. Why try to shoot something or do something that got you two likes, but you posted something else? Like, for example, I posted my work, my brand work. Oh, my God, I love it. It looks great. No, that's nice. But until I posted my brand work with me in it, oh, Carmen, what you got going on? We got, man, this is amazing. Um, I have three clients for you. What was the difference? The difference was, and I, at first I was like, oh, it's just probably they're trying to hit on me. No, mm -hmm. it wasn't. It was I am the brand. Absolutely. So when you get into marketing, how to grow your marketing is you really have to know what your brand is and let your audience tell you what they like and go with that. Absolutely. My audience was telling me, Carmen, yeah, we know you're creative. We know you artsy-fartsy, but I want to see more of you, I, we want you, your work is you, you know? So anybody who's, who's trying to figure out this marketing thing, you know, these analytics, these, um, a lot of the stuff that people don't get, it goes right over your head. Absolutely. Don't get so caught up into the numbers, get caught up into what people are actually saying. And they do that through action. So engagement and followings and let your videos test it out. Don't try to be perfect, post post a whole lot of content, you'll see which ones they like. 
And when you find that out, keep doing that. Mm -hmm. Keep doing it until you see that engagement go down. Try something else. That's not working. Try a few more things. From there, they're going to show back up again. People are finicky, but people are consistent if they like it. It's, it's no big gimmick. Absolutely. You know, so marketing, look at the data. Look at the actions. And that makes sense, too. Uh, engagement is key. Yeah. Um, people tend to engage in things they identify with or they want to identify with. Right. So you got to make sure. I, I, the only time I've seen an artist, and I'm using artist because I could just think of her right now, mm -hmm. uh, didn't, did not use herself as, uh, as, as the marketing piece was her, Gabby. Right. Gabby Wilson. Right. She took, because she wanted to rebrand herself, so she, you never saw who she was. To even realize, oh, that's little Gabby from blah blah blah. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. So she she said, either you're gonna just rock with the music, or you're not gonna rock with me. Right. And then her music was so good. Then when you realize, man, that's Gabby Wilson. That ain't. But right, this whole but the time. the whole time. But you she rebranded. Mind you, I said rebranded yes. using not her not herself because we knew who she well those in the industry we right. knew who we she knew were who she, who she was before she ended up showing us who she was. Uh, as an artist. So that's the key. Go ahead. To that point, there's a flip side. Some people don't, you know, okay, what if they don't want to see you? What if you're trying to figure that out? The flip side to branding still is you have to have credibility. Mm. This is where products come into play. This is where new artistry comes into place, new producers. When you're new, it's harder to kind of branch out there so if your story isn't compelled you weren't shot what was what was 50 cents nine, nine times, times yeah. right when i heard of 50 cent it was that that was his story oh the rapper that was shot nine times everyone is attached to a story but what if you're not right what if you're not and i think one of the questions earlier was partnerships strategic partnerships why are they important because you need credibility and sometimes it's just like when i think of my son he's he's 11 you don't got no credit. You don't got credit. It's just like building credit. How do you do that? Like most, when you get 16, 17, you don't have credit. You have to start. So you attach yourself to something that has the credibility already. Absolutely. So so these are for people, okay, if, you know, they don't want to see me. My engagement is low. My marketing is not doing good. You want to connect and be aligned with mm -hmm. the right people to bring you the credibility you need. Now this is, it sounds like a no brainer, but some people also mess up here because you're attaching yourself to the, to the wrong. wrong person or the yep. wrong product or the wrong thing that doesn't align with your brand. So you're going in circles. I've yep. seen this burnouts like, or it's not working out. It's because one or two things, you don't know your story. Yep. You don't know your brand and you're trying to attach to someone who Hot at the moment. Right. It's good at the moment. They look good. Let me mm -hmm. get them to jump on the song or let me get them to wear my clothing line yep. or let me get them on my website. It sounds great, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So, you know, we're going to talk about the same things a lot, but alignment is important. So part of building your brand is brand um, partnerships, Absolutely. strategic partnerships and making sure you're picking the correct ones. And that's key. Sometimes people do things for a check, but a lot of right. times uh, th the money is only that one check. That's but if it. you have the right strategic partner, right. instead of making a million one time, you can make 250000 10 times you've made more money. Right. So you got to understand that concept. It's good to go for the – everybody go take a million one time. I take that million one time. For sure. But <laughs> – if you can take two, if somebody told you to give you the option of taking 250 10 times or 1 million one time, obviously people who know how to do math is going to take the 250 right, 10 times. Right. Because one thing about the 250 10 times is it continuously allows people to see you more than once. Yes. yes. A million one times, you got you one and you done. Right. You got them M, but you one and done. But now that. 250 10 times can potentially lead you to a couple more times after that at a higher rate because you were seen more times, which allowed you to be engaging more times than exactly. once. Exactly. That's key because the right partnerships 
will bring you the right exposure. Exactly. That's it's, it is. And that's it. And when she goes back to credit, you got a kid that's eleven years old. You don't look a day over twenty six. Thank you, darling. <laughs> oh my lord, look at this. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm telling my age. <laughs> so I do. now that we understand the alignment, we understand uh, the authenticity, we understand um, the consistency. What would you say could we discuss briefly rebranding? Okay. So let's say we started and we've gotten our brand to as far as we can take it. We feel like we reached a, seek, uh, uh, a ceiling. Right. What are some strategic or some how-tos of rebranding yourself? Hmm, good question. I get that a lot. And every what, what month is this? What, August? In August, yeah. Woo. About next month is when they usually, uh, Carmen, uh, yeah, so I want to rebrand to go into the new year. Everybody yeah. want a new website. A new th <laughs> and I'm like, what are you doing new? Right. You know, it, it's almost like clockwork. Like, your fourth quarter would be popping for me. <laughs> right. <laughs> but some tips to rebrand is, um, and I know we've been talking on an artist level and stuff like that, but I don't want to forget that when we get to digital real estate, rebranding can be a simply as simple as, you know, adding new content to your website. Mm -hmm. It can be restructuring your content. So if you're like even your wheel, um, your reels, social media, um, it can be you've been doing those things for so long. Let's come up with a, another strategy. Mm -hmm. So I'll take a client of mine that came to me. I want to rebrand um, this client had been doing great in business. Nothing was wrong. Their, their numbers, their sales were doing good, but they want more awareness. They want a different clientele. So usually the first quest question I ask is, you're rebranding for what? Mm -hmm. What's the purpose? Everything should have a purpose. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what's the, you know, is it for your sales were too low, you, you whatever, mm -hmm. or you're outgrowing your brand, you have new opportunities. All right. Life, we all grow older, so there's a reason for your rebranding. Absolutely. So whatever that reason is, is what I attack, you know, is what we start to work with. This um, particular one was, I've grown. Um, I have a family now. My structure, I can't keep, you know, my audience is no longer the young genre anymore. Mm -hmm. So your brand might naturally change anyway, mm -hmm. and you have to catch up with it. So some tips I would say is we start with the basics, which would be your website, updating um, logos and stuff like that, your brand colors, your brand direction. We restructure your brand mission, your story. Let's add the addition of, okay, this is where you were. This is where you're going to go. Mm -hmm. um, make your audience aware that you're growing. Don't forget that step. Absolutely. And a lot of people do that. And that could be as simple as you going on social media like, yo, I woke up and I'm 40 today. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've, I've covered all of these grounds. My business is doing so great. I got to tell your story and then lead to I'm about to present you guys with the next version of me. Right. Let them be prepared for what's going to happen. I understand this new world. Beyonce be dropping records and. While she could do that. She has the credibility. She, she has all the things that I've mentioned. <laughs> yeah. She has a team. Okay. She can do that. We understand that. But for, for some of us that can't do that, we got to make you guys aware. We're going to get disappointed and probably give up. So you want to head to social media. You want to update your personal brand. You want to go to social media and update your followers that you do have. Mm -hmm. And the next probably natural step is, depending on what industry you're in, um, honestly, it's partnerships. Because usually when people brand, they've already, the first level of their career or product, whatever, they did on their own. It wasn't any partnerships. You're not featuring yourself on anybody's album. You're not doing, it's your own baby. Right, right, right. So your next step for rebrand would be announcing a partnership. Mm. That's That, that would be sense. huge. It would make sense. It would also allow your audience uh, the, the grace of seeing you in a new light, right. you know? So that's one thing I would re recommend. Or that's you. key also. And I, I, I don't, I'm not sure what the study was called, mm -hmm. but when you said something about changing logos and changing colors, right? Yes. There was something, I can't remember what, I can't remember what it was called. I just heard it. I was in a meeting in one of the Sony or something like that. Okay. And they were speaking about 
why McDonald's colors are red and yellow. Mm. It was like red signifies it, it, it and subconsciously making people want to eat. Or, it, it was like some yes. thing. But when I thought about it, I started thinking, okay, McDonald's is red. Wendy's is red. Yeah. KFC red. Like I was just thinking of all the different uh, different uh, big brands. Right. Just a food. Chick-fil-A red. Like you just so many different brands that use red. Right. Wendy's isn't red, but Wendy's the girl got red hair. Right. Hair so, over. Oh yeah. Right. Red but hair. The, the other colors, but the actual character. Yeah. Has, so it was I was thinking about I'm like, that makes sense. Yeah. But who who would think of something like that? But color is important. It is. It's and extremely important. I think, you know, a brand isn't just a logo, a pretty logo and a nice website. It's it's a lot that goes into Absolutely. it. So like I said, storyline is important, but you got to make sure that when you work with someone, if it's not your field, it's usually difficult to explain branding to someone who is not in that field. I get, I find myself talking to a lot of entrepreneurs who are trying to get their brands off the ground. So what I would say to them is you want to get with a brand expert, brand strategist, who's not only good in branding, which is like, aesthetics colors mm -hmm. fonts and things like that those things matter <clears throat> those things matter but you want to get with someone who has an overall view of a brand so I, I own an agency when a client comes to me I do their brand suite their brand suite includes of a questionnaire um, an audit I'm able to look at your brand and tell you about your competitors tell you where you are tell you why it's not working mm. Do all your brand fonts, colors, whatever that works for your storyline. But then from there, create your digital real estate, your apps that are in line with that. But then also, I'm able to take your project and grow your brand. So whoever you're working with, it's not just, oh, can you make me a website now? Right. If you're going to invest that money, and I so support any creative graphic designers, I'm a creator. You want to work with someone who sees you not just for that moment. A true brand agency or a specialist or expert is going to be able to say, I can see your brand in 20 years. Mm -hmm. The same thing that's happening with Beyonce, Jay-Z. Nothing happens overnight. So these people had to figure out what phases you're in. That's what you're looking for. Your phase. Phase one starts off with you discovering yourself, mm -hmm. creating your website, creating your brand, your initial, and then your brand book, which includes like how your logos and stuff are used, a lot of stuff that's in your press kit or whatever the case may be. But then it's also inclusive of where you're going to be in five years. That makes sense. Okay. A lot of times um, the – People, artists, building uh, a company mm -hmm. that are seeking this are impatient. Oh, yeah. Extremely impatient. They want to change right now. I'm changing tonight. I just, it's just, it's just like this. <laughs> <laughs> I use this example. You, you've been married for 30 years. We've been married for 30 years. Right. We get a divorce. Now, mind you, I've been fat and out of shape the whole time we was married. <laughs> and you've been not doing your hair. As soon as you get divorced. All of a sudden, I'm fine. in the gym, man. I'm in the gym 300, <laughs> 360 days, uh, 365. Like, oh, <laughs> right? okay. like, now so you want to change. change. You could have did this yesterday. We right. could, you know what I'm saying? So uh, rebranding takes time. So how does artists, uh, companies, whatever, how do they prepare in the transition period like the transition time how do they stay patient and stay productive in the transition in between rebranding do you start the rebranding without telling everybody and then start laying everything out or like how does it work okay well the honest truth of it is we live in a popcorn society absolutely so rebranding as it was which we called it artist development De yep, yep. doesn't exist that's a fact so everyone has to jump on that bag when it, like it, it's I have to create brands in 24 to 48 hours. Right. So it can happen. Mm -hmm. 
it can happen overnight, but there's a lot of things that get into place. So if you were someone who didn't have the budget or didn't have those things, what you could do to rebrand. Simple is just adding, you know, just changing up your website, you know, the simple stuff. Getting with a brand um, strategist to say, okay, I need this. If it's, sometimes it's not even your website, it's a personal brand. You probably need to book a brand photo shoot. Mm -hmm. New images, a new look. It may turn into, because remember, your brand is you. Absolutely. So a rebrand, naturally, unless it's a product, if you're an artist, a producer, whatever, unless you're just switching a sound, going to country from hip hop, uh, you know, you, it's you changing. Absolutely. So your rebrand should almost start as with yourself. So bringing more awareness to who you are. Now, give and take, a lot of people don't want to be in front of the camera, but we're in a, a society where people don't see your work as much if they don't know who you are. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't like that it's like that, but that's the, the truth. That's true. So a step that I would take in rebranding is making sure you're up to date on uh, your image. Your image is important. It's not everything. The quality of your work is. Mm -hmm. But looking into a, a lifestyle brand, that's what I call. Mm -hmm. A lot of artists come to me for that. You can only get but so many colors or a, a, a new website, but a personal brand starts with you. Right. And Switch I think a lot of times we don't grow into things. A lot of times we just jump into things. And right. that's the key. You have to grow into things. I had to grow into a bald head. So how I grew into my bald head <laughs> grew into was. A bald head. Yeah, let me show you. Let me check this out though. So this is this my y'all laughing, but this is my rebranding. Let me hear this. Because I had waves coming though. I had waves in the goatee, right? Circle uh, uh, 360 ways in the goatee. So I grew into a bald head. Check this out. Okay. I noticed we was in the studio <laughs> one time, and it take my girl Shay to be like, I don't know, fam, you getting kind of thin up top. <laughs> I remember that. I, I hate you, Shay. Why you say that? You know she how was you like, about his hair. You get, you getting thin up top there, fam, <laughs> and then she has nerve to touch it. <laughs> So she touches, she give me, the, she give me the. I'm like, so now I'm self conscious as a dog. Yes. Now mind you, I'm not showing this oh when we're in the studio, but when I got to the crib, was boy, looking. I was taking all kind of pictures trying to see what she was talking about, <laughs> so I could see. Oh my god! So I had to go into the bar head. Mm. So the next day, before we get in the studio, I go to the barber shop, get a cut. My bar my barber at the time name was Mark. I know he was so good. I say, Mark, thank you. Hey man. Let's just take him down a little bit. Let's walk him. Let's walk him on out. You know what I'm saying? So I go from having this thick 360 to like I got like a small amount. I got hair. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't all I ain't all the way at the crib yet. So I got hair, but I'm walking on out the door. So you know how when you leave the house, you grab your jacket. It's cold outside. You grab your jacket. You put on your shoes. You know what I'm saying? You might grab an umbrella. I had my umbrella and everything at the door. I knew what time it was. You knew. So, I bought this stuff where it was follicles. You know how most people you get to spray? I bought these follicles <laughs> trying to save my life. <laughs> so, I bought these follicles to go get a haircut. I say, look, so once you cut me low, go on a uh, bust a little, uh, you know, put a little bit of this on the top of it. So, it's hair, it's like, uh, it's not dyed, but it's like little things that stick to your hair. All the men out there that's coming on to the crib, y'all know what I'm talking about. Women may not be, you know, abreast to this, but the men know what I'm talking about. So I'll get a cut, and then I'll boom, boom, hit the follicles. So I still, I'm, I'm still living a little bit, a little bit of wave life. I ain't deep, deep diving like I was. <laughs> so then I said, I, I gotta take the, I got to take the, the focus off my head. Boom, y'all see this beard? That's where that beard came from. Anyone because it was slick. It had nothing to do with nothing. That. It was like, how can I make people look at me instead of looking at my head? I grew the beard. Right. So I got the beard to kind of take distract from the hair. And the next thing you know, there was no hair. It was a thick beard. So people realized, like, it's something different about you. <laughs> Yo, dog, when you cut your hair, my boy sounds like, dog, when did you come on home? I'm like, man, like four years ago. He's like, man, I'm just not noticing it. I tricked him. You tricked him. It was the beard. Good lifestyle. I rebranded. He had right. the lifestyle. He had to walk these people into this thing. You can't just jump out the window and say, boom, I'm, I'm bald I'm head. And then I ain't got no beard. Now I'm looking like I need to catch a charge. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you got to walk these people into your brand. Oh my God. And that was the story how I walked into 
what you see right the Mr. Clean version of myself thanks to my sister Lachey for keeping it 100 because there's a bunch of people out here t- wouldn't keep it 100 that's with lying me lying to you that's like, lying to okay, me all this time you okay. need people on your team <laughs> that's going to keep it 1,000 with you, you and Lachey kept it 1,000 even did. even gave me a little you know what I'm saying right. so now I'm out here not looking crazy because I could be up here Patch Adams up here <laughs> talking to y'all right now you know what I'm saying so that's important to make sure that you walk the people into the new you. The new you. You know what I'm saying? Right. I gave y'all that for comedic relief, but also it literally was true. That's literally what happened. That's why it's even funny here because that's exactly what happened. Now, back to to um to the regularly scheduled program. <laughs> All right, rebrand. All right. So now that we've rebranded, we've gotten uh, we've gotten other people to gotten people to understand us as right. the, the the growth that we've came through. Right. Now let's talk about how do we use the social media pieces to accompany us in our rebranding. Right. So, uh, man, there's so many apps. Yes. Social media, you already know. Instagram is popping. Facebook is popping. A lot of these old heads are just getting into TikTok, but you got to get into TikTok Mm -hmm. because it's important. One step or one thing I would say is content is key. Content is key. And um, you ever heard of that thing? People, uh, I don't know what is it? like perfectionists, but it's a, it's a, a, a saying they use. People are starting to, to try to make reels or things to be perfect. And it got to, mm-hmm. the, the lighting, I have to have the best camera. No, you don't. Right. You don't have to have none of that. So the first thing I would say is work with what you have. Like literally work with what you have. Because mm-hmm. if you look around the world, I think there's this one um, TikTok, this is real, of these dancers that they're young they're in africa oh yeah i see them and you yeah. always see them yeah they don't got no special camera it's just them but people want to see them dance i, right. I think y'all know what i'm talking about i know about. exactly what like, you're talking about it, boy. yeah like, hey, hey. okay i ain't gonna get it too because i'm about to get up and dance <laughs> but they work with what they have and i think sometimes social media even though we use it and i'm gonna give some some tools that you can use we get intimidated because other people have best the better cameras, you know, they are skiing with the cameras on their head. We don't we don't have that. That's fine. Just use your phone. It doesn't have to be the latest iPhone and Android. It just has to be a phone. Just pull it out and start recording. Everything is content. Mm-hmm. So remember that. The top two places in regards to using Instagram or any social media is Utilizing their analytics, of mm-hmm. course, so we know what they like. But you also want to tap into the real worlds because I don't think a lot of people are really into like they get it. But Instagram just restructured their posts to For show reals. the reels. They don't even show pictures. They don't That's even show pictures. It's like That's you're just fact. looking at video all day. Yep. So video um, reels and carousels are key. Why? Carousels. Let me tell you why. People I haven't really been on. And what are carousels? Carousels is where you see an image, but it's multiple um, images in one post. Okay, so you know, so mm-hmm. some, something will say, um, "I'm going to teach you five steps on how to brand like a pro." Slide to the next, you know. Mm-hmm. So you can have up to five to ten. But the reason why carousels are, G, like, is because you can post something, you got five times to attract different people so maybe that first picture and i'm like hey the girl's like oh she ugly swipe well when they come back to it it's going to show the second image Mm. and it may be you know a picture of the ice cream the parlor i was at or whatever the case may be and she likes that you got like an engagement on something a second time around with someone so look at carousels as you have as many images That's how many chances you got to get someone's attention. So if I'm a recording artist and I'm doing a freestyle, somebody's probably going to think I'm whack, Mm -hmm. whatever. But the next one may be an inspirational quote. Mm -hmm. And they don't even see the first slide or they're going to like it based off of that quote. So you have five, six, seven, eight, nine, how many times? I don't know how many they let you Mm -hmm. get to get anyone's attention. So use your carousels people use it yeah and, and, and that's called a slight swipe right thing right you yeah, can swipe yeah, and yeah. it it allow you to post multiple images yeah. or videos videos yeah 
you want to use that because you get an opportunity to test instead of you remember you said well rebranding is hard it's it's or not hard longer no yeah no it's not because now you have tools or tips to speed up that process so carousels and reels the reason why reels work people can see your product a still image but if you are a restaurant mm -hmm. they can't taste that chicken right they can't taste it and if you're posting a picture of that chicken they're gonna they can't taste that chicken right a video gets them as close to to imagining what it smells like what it tastes like even showing how you made it I, exactly you, different it's, ingredients and, all that yeah and I don't know. We we live in a society where we we got trust issues. Yeah. That's why carousels and videos work because trust issues. Mm -hmm. You are creating an environment for people through feeling and emotion. It's nothing else. These people don't know your story. Right. You can even try to tell your story, like I said, find your story, but you're trying to invoke an emotion, a, a feeling. You're trying to Find out what these people like. Give more of that. So tapping into reels, video gets them closer to that. And using your carousels gives you an opportunity to have many chances with a person who probably would have walked past you that one time. That makes sense, too. And okay. We also, I also, there's a saying we use in business where you never do business when you're emotional. You know what I'm saying? Because you can make the wrong decision. But mm -hmm. if you can make your viewers emotional, People spend off of emotions as well. Oh my gosh. So if you can, you know, like like I gotta, I gotta have a son. I'd be buying all types of stuff. You got I a son? would never, yeah, <laughs> never do. I would never do. Like I, I go to the mall and don't buy me nothing. I go out travel a lot. I don't buy me anything. I come back with right. nine pair of shoes for him. You know what I'm saying? Like I, right. I would never buy nine pair of shoes for myself. You know what I'm saying? That's so. Cool. Emotions make people do things they wouldn't normally do. Meaning, if you can catch them while you're with your product or your song or whatever, you know they, they can be breaking up with somebody. And you have the right record; they'll remember that. It's, there's songs I can hear, and I remember where I was at when I first heard the song. I can literally picture in my mind, oh, I was at such and such crib, blah blah blah. I can remember everything. So your product, or your you as an artist, can be that for someone, or yeah. your product can be for that for someone as well. But then it's all full circle. Everything we talk about is full circle. Same thing, evoking emotion, just like utilizing the music. TikTok or those certain songs, they go viral because people can relate. So sometimes yep. your content could suck, but you chose the right song or a song on TikTok that has gone viral. Mm -hmm. People will watch it just for that song because it's the emotion ta attached to it. Absolutely. And it also you know, goes back to partnerships. When you are posting, using your carousels, post everything. Yeah. But also be strategic about what music you use. They're going to tune in. They're going to like it. That They're makes sense. Like it. That makes sense. So now in closing, because I don't want to have you up. You, you cost too much to keep up here too long. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so in closing, give me five, three to five things that are extremely important mm -hmm. about branding, even though you may have said them again, we just want to reiterate for those who just sure. may have tuned in. Mm -hmm. And then give me three things for marketing that are extremely important for those who may have just tuned in. Then I want to take a question or two from the, yeah. from the audience. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to reiterate because I keep it straight. I'm a professor, so I'll be teaching. I'll be thinking, <laughs> let, let me say this so they can understand. They can write this down. Oh, God. Um, have a story. Mm -hmm. A unique story. Authentic story. Be real. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, make sure that your story, your brand, has an end goal. What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. What do you want it to do? You want people to hear about you? You want to make more money? Are you just doing it because you love it? And whoever chimes in, chimes in. You have an end goal attached to that. Um, you said two more. Um, branding, you want to make sure if this isn't your field, you don't know what direction you're going in. And I say this with, you don't have to find me to do your brand, I'm saying. But find someone who's able to see your five to ten year goal. That is important. Mm -hmm. Don't get caught up on trying to get ready for New Year's and have a website done. 
because if you spend two to five thousand on a website just for then you've wasted your money you want to invest in yourself and the best way to do that is investing in someone who's going to give you what your brand will grow to in five to ten years trust me with this and also making sure that who you align yourself with your strategic partnerships are a part of that packaging. So if you're getting with someone to help you build your apps, build your website, help you with your personal brand, get you a, you know, photo shoot, a brand photo shoot, making sure your promo videos are done, make sure that they also understand the end goal, that they got you full circle. So that's for branding. Um, marketing is a second part of that. Once that person or you have established your brand, you want to make sure you're creating content every day, every day. Um, I would utilize, if you don't have a team to pay, get on Fiverr. Get a team to edit your short videos. If you need a videographer, um, if you're not a mixer, producer, if you're not a graphic designer, you should already have your brand and logo and stuff already created your website. But now you need to make sure that your content is created. Mm -hmm. So you want to get a specific team, if it's not yourself, using your phone to document whatever you're doing and have it edited. Creating reels and carousels are important. I did leave out probably one of the most important things about marketing is the main thing about marketing is awareness. You want to start an evergreen ad. You want ads. So ads, and that could be if you're selling a product or if you're putting out music there's different types of ads Facebook has it where you literally can pay two dollars a dollar a day but that same ad will get played and people who search for a specific genre or a specific product your stuff will always pop up so making sure once you establish a brand and you get into the marketing once you've packaged something you have a reel you've done the data you've seen what everybody loves Make that your ad. That's easy. Let the world see that, okay? And an ad doesn't mean you're selling something. An ad is just, this is advertising. I'm making it aware. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be anything more than that, okay? That makes sense, man. Yeah. This has been informative. Um, do I have any questions from anybody out there? Got any questions? Any questions? Me? Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes and no. Yes and no. I would say marketing is more so No, it's really not. They like they like one and the same. Yeah, cuz it's like how people got confused about branding and marketing. They all exist. They coexist together. One can't exist without the other. The the question was is there a difference between marketing and and advertising? Right. And I'm saying that they are one and the same, or one can't exist without the other, okay? Advertising is, you know, you, you th and anybody sees advertising, you think of billboards. It's more of the placements of where marketing is. But marketing, when you think of that, is more, people think more ads. They think more Facebook. They think SEO. They think my website, okay? The traffic to my website, that's more marketing. Advertising is more billboards, mm -hmm. more magazine um, publications, things mm -hmm. like that. But yeah. they're all in the same. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. We got any more? We got a thousand people out here today. We bringing yeah, them out. Damn. Bring them out. Bring them out. <laughs> Chris. Um, I was ask, in your professional career, what's your biggest failure and what lesson have you learned? Woo! In your professional career, what is your biggest failure and what lesson have you learned? I like that. that. Why you ask me that? Huh. Look, look, look at the eye roll. Because you're like, I've been failing for the last 15 years, and I can't forever. be the only one, Jesus. <laughs> I feel oh. you because I feel the same way, boss. Sheesh. Where, where do I start? Because I failed a lot. Um, hmm, that's a good one. Ooh, okay. Y'all ready for me to be real? Y'all, why? My biggest failure, I don't call it a failure. I don't have failures. My biggest lesson was um, 
I wasn't ready. Yeah, I had a huge opportunity, a, a few, and I wasn't ready. You hear all this, say, get ready so you don't have to be ready? That is so true. And I, I'm so grateful to God that I had another opportunity, but some don't get it. Mm-hmm. And when I say I wasn't ready, I had an opportunity to, you know, direct a, a major motion picture, and I wasn't ready. Yeah. And... um it was embarrassing. But what I say, the reason why I wasn't a failure is because I think the biggest well, failures or mistakes is you never will do it again. They're so big. They're so depressing. Yeah. You won't ever do that again. I only need that to happen one time. I'm not about to miss any other opportunity. So I would say in the gamut of my career, I wasn't ready. And I want to take it back just to, and we can end it. Oh, we got my time. grandfather Go would teach me this, and I should have known because I wouldn't have missed that opportunity. And everything that I've done, let's say music, I knew how to engineer. I knew how to write. I knew how to produce. I knew how to break down equipment. I knew every – I was the intern. I was cleaning toilets. You know, I played every role in that industry. I wasn't great all the time. I sucked. And this is a story I tell. I was sitting in a studio, and and this guy just comes in the studio, sitting down, and I'm playing my music. Hey, I'm a great. Hey, turn this volume up. And he's like, that's you? You did that? I'm like, yeah, that's me. That's me. And he's like, I don't sound too good. I was like, who are you? He was like, you know, I'm good. He's like, no, I'm playing, I'm playing. But he was like, yeah, you can work on this. You can work on that. I was like, okay, well, and he started asking me who I was, and I was like, you know, I'm just, I'm this and I'm that, and I was like, well, who are you? He's like, Dion. I'm like, Dion who? I don't know who you are. So I go to the other studio, tell him this guy is telling me I'm whack, like, who, he don't know, like, I'm, I've been working, I'm, I'm, and he, he was like, you don't know who that is? It's no ID. And I was like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> He was like, he gave me a whole laundry list of who this guy was. And I said, oh, are you serious? And he come, no idea, comes in. He was like, yeah. He was like, very modest, very modest. And he was like, yeah, I don't say my name like that, you know. He was like, but you're good. You're, you're really good. He was like, but I want you to look at writing. I want you to look at, you know, your career as stay in this moment, right from that moment. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he was like, I was listening to your writing. It sounds good, but take a specific moment and stick there. Like, stick with that. Stick, stick with that emotion and let people feel that. And I was like, okay. So we started working, but I cultivated a relationship from there, and, and we started working together. And that was the most profound thing because I think back to that failure that I had, and I'm like, okay. Some people don't get opportunities to do things twice, you know. Some don't even get the first opportunity, Word. you know. But one thing I can say is my biggest failure taught me that moments like that, moments like with you, Lachey, the people that I meet in the industry, cultivate those. Cultivate those. Be ready and uh, get it. There you go. And I, and I agree 100% with that because a lot of times opportunities build upon each other. <clears throat> Today you might be doing something small for a company, oh but then tomorrow that company is sponsoring your tour because you did that small thing. That's small. And a lot of times we miss that because of the amount of revenue they're, they're willing to give you or not willing to give you right. or <clears throat> because they haven't blown up as a company yet. Right. Can you imagine working with Red Bull when they first started? I remember no. when Red Bull first started. They used to send Red Bull to our – I went to college at FAMU. They used to send Red Bull to us to try to get us to drink it, to stay up. I remember when they started. If uh-huh. I would have known the guy, whoever the real person was, not to just the people dropping off the drinks, yeah. if I could have built a relationship with them then, mm-hmm. I could have – I didn't know them. I didn't have that opportunity. But had I had – she was speaking about opportunity to meet the actual people who started the company. Right. Imagine what that may have spawned into. Or – uh, I remember when vitamin water was starting as well, but right. we was drinking Gatorade in college. Right. You know, like when you're athlete, because that's what was 
Michael Jordan and Bo Jackson and all these different people. But vitamin water, just think about they sponsor tours too. Yes. They sponsor th things. You know what I'm saying? Each All of these big conglomerates have to give away money because to. or they get taxed. Right. So think about building relationships with them early, taking small opportunities with them because they'll think about you when the, the big opportunities come. So now I'm just, I just use those as examples because opportunities come, sometimes we miss them because they're not attached to a paycheck. And that's the problem. That is the, the problem. opportunity should not have to be attached to a paycheck before you recognize it's an opportunity. And right. a lot of people miss. Or a big name. Yep. A lot of people miss because every big name was a small name at was one a point. Small name. Every big name was a small name at one point. So don't miss an opportunity because no, do of a, a a dollar amount. Right. There's now there's a difference between somebody getting over and then somebody's giving you an opportunity. Right, so right. I, I'm not saying be naive. I'm saying right. weigh your options and know the difference between an opportunity and um, being naive. But don't let quote unquote small opportunities because you're watching somebody else run that race. Mm. So you'll miss an opportunity because oh they just gave Chad two million dollars to do such and such. They offered me fifteen hundred, but you weren't there when Chad was doing everything for free. You're right. To get to work his way to the big people who really cut the big checks. You get what I'm saying? Because sometimes people that approach you with the smaller opportunities, that's because that's where they are in the company. Right. But you got to use them to get to the next level, to the next level, to the next level. So you can't make the mistake of missing an opportunity because it's not attached to a check. If every time an opportunity, if, if the way you think opportunities are going to get bigger for you is because it's attached to a check, you're going to be broke your whole life. The you're never going to miss you're never going to get the big opportunities because you're looking at it from the wrong vantage point. All right. So you I just want to make sure I said that, that because yeah. I see artists do it every day. Yeah. I see it every day mm -hmm. because they, they're looking at the other things or what other artists are doing or what other opportunities and they'll, they'll dismantle their team because of this artist doing that. They'll do all kinds of stuff. They'll change a lot of things in their, in, in their own situations because they were comparing themselves with other people but if you run in your own race right. you'll understand that there's a reason that the arrow that get pulled that gets pulled back the furthest travels the furthest which means they mm -hmm. start off behind everybody but when the arrow is released it shoots past everyone and travels the furthest distance if the angle is correct Right. And that's the problem. A lot of us are pulling back, but we're not aiming. We're aiming straight. We're not aiming at an angle so that we can get lift with it. You got to understand the difference Better between the, you got to understand the difference between angles as well. And when I say angles, I'm using it metaphorically, but angles meaning the thought process and the research behind such and such or so forth. You know what I'm saying? Right. Opportunities. So make sure your angles are on point as well. Because right. if you shoot an angle, if you shoot a 90 degree. If we that we pull it back, this, we pull the arrow back the same. Mine is gonna go further if I do a forty-five over your ninety, because now you have no lift on your ninety that I do on my forty-five. So make sure you understand the difference of angles as well, meaning weighing the opportunity. That's what I mean by angles. Right. All right. So listen, this concludes our August conversation with my sister Carmen Estevez, and I want to make sure that you understand. All of the things she has going on. So, Carmen, I want you to tell them about your different companies you have. The shoot up, shout out the websites, all of that, because I want to make sure they understand. They, if they want to reach out to you on some business, they have the opportunity to. Definitely. But I just want to give your company some shine. Definitely. So, you want to make sure if you want to find me, you can go to my website www.esteviscreative.com. Um, and that's spell it. E S T E V as in Victor. E S creative c-r-e-a-t-i-v-e dot com and you can check out my instagram carmen estevis c-a-r-m-e-n-e-s-t-e-v-e-s -E -E um or my business uh e creative group e c-r-e-a-t-i-v-e -E group g-r-o-u-p um check me out on those uh, social media facebook is the same um but now i'm working i, I started a tech company mm -hmm. uh, a woman tech company it's awesome we are doing we're in beta right now so definitely look out for that um Carmen, Girl, speaking, stop right there she's starting a what company a what tech kind of company. company a tech company had a conversation with her about a tech company we talked she called old school and said yo i need to run something by you 
<laughs> and I said, if you don't, don't do it, I'm going to fly to where you're at and pl- I'm, I'm do it. And she's like, all right. Right. I listen, listen, I have to call him on some stuff because he knows what he knows. And that's big. Like, you can be talented. You can be great. I was telling my son this. You got to pick the right people. Like, for real. Like, you're going to have to have your hood, some of your thugs in your life, some lawyers, some attorneys, people who are good with business, creative. You have to have them all. Absolutely. I am talented, but I can't do everything. I don't know everything. Um, alignment. Uh, you you ain't going nowhere, bro. For facts, facts forever. Family. But yes, yeah, yes, definitely. Um, and he, he he really just you you yeah. I almost didn't take that opportunity to go through with this tech company, but I'm so glad I made that call. He was like, uh, I need you to wake up. He didn't use those words though. <laughs> and I told all. I need two percent too, because <laughs> so it's when it's worth billions. Just gonna throw me a little taste. I just need a little taste. That's it. This is a sample, a smidget. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> crazy yep so that's what i'm doing i started my tech company um my agency is doing great um and i have more things to come i kind of want to surprise some people i didn't do that we, we yeah, cool you gave us enough things to come but she it's named a the, bunch of stuff like she ain't named a lot already i'm like it's in the film world that. but you know i'm, I'm just blessed and I'm, I'm grateful i'm really grateful and like i said you know i i hope when people see me that i'm grateful of that question my failure was missing an opportunity. So when you see me do these things, just know the reason why I'm not missing any anymore. Absolutely, man. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you every, thank the thousands of you for coming. I would ask thank y'all to clap, so but I don't much. want them to sound crazy on camera. So y'all just hold y'all applause and thank y'all so much. This is Amplifier Community Connection. We appreciate you. We see y'all next month.